<laughs> Welcome to the party. <laughs> <laughs> Should we restart or just keep going? Just, let's just go with it, man. All right, all right. All we don't right. even have a topic. About? We don't even have a topic. Yeah, but, we do. Two words. Uh, three words. Isaiah's muscle pull. Five That's words. The to- that better. is the topic. <laughs> <laughs> so Isaiah, in his unhinged bewilderment of decision making when dunking is on the on the table when it's in the itinerary when it's when it's on the menu he can't control himself and as a result uh he was like i'm gonna go dunk on a monday mind you we don't dunk on mondays we dunk on fridays we never dunk on mondays but unbeknownst to me isaiah and austin have this belief embedded in their soul that their best sessions are the unplanned ones those yeah. are their best ones. And, and therefore, the justification on, to jump on a Monday was born. And that justification has fucked over the plan numerous, numerous times for years and years and years since 2019, yeah. 2020. To his credit, though, I will say this. He has hit some crazy dunks in unplanned sessions. But I think he could probably still hit those dunks on the plan day of Friday. It's just that when yeah. it's Monday morning and Austin says, I'm flying to New Jersey. Can we dunk? And then all of a sudden they're bringing their basketball shoes to the, the, the weight room and warming up for their weight session on the basketball court. All they super setting with ball handling drills. Ball handling drills. That's usually yeah. what it is. So go ahead. Explain to the, to the people, that, you know, just reiterate what I said. Let's hear your all lens right. on this. John is very biased. Let me give you... <laughs> Let me give you the real. What are you smoking right now? So you're going to give the unbiased opinion about why you dunked? Mine is slightly biased the other way, and you can form your own opinion of what the truth is. Oh, the two biases. (laughs) We're in the middle. Okay. We we just deloaded. All right. Had a session. Booty cheeks. We were still fatigued. What day was that session on? Friday. All right. Just wanted to reiterate that. And there's going to give you more information about my muscle pull as well. I max my belt squat on Saturday, not knowing I was going to dunk on on Monday. Yeah, I was going to say, I I was going to dunk on Monday. That was not the plan A. B, he did that because he wanted a training stimulus that was hard after he said he felt like the session was kind of wasted. So he was like, I'm going to. And we were going to start a new training cycle with belt squat. So I wanted to know what percentages to work off of. So still, still, this was still in line with the plan. This is still technically. I'm done interrupting. I just wanted to add those key points. Then Monday rolls around. For context, Austin Burke at Austin Burke eight. If you want to follow him on Instagram and look at a five nine guy jump really high, he's he's leaving. He's leaving us for all of time, allegedly. <laughs> he's he's moving to New Jersey, so he's not going to be living here anymore, allegedly. So he's leaving Wednesday, and he really wants to dunk. Mind you, he's been begging me to dunk and i do this thing with austin where i always tell him no until the morning of the day where like he always asks me like let's dunk let's dunk let's dunk and i put it off i'm like no i follow the plan i'm disciplined and then and then Wait, so you're the, saying that austin is the reason this happened he had been asked i have i have receipts I, I could literally pull up receipts of him saying he wants to dunk one more time before we leave yeah, but he was begging you all weekend to do that on Monday. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, I saw like a text, maybe two, asking, but he was behind closed doors, texting you. Can try. He was, to he was it. whispering. He was whispering in my ah. ear. <laughs> He's like a serpent. So, <laughs> so then Monday rolls around, and you know, I, I wake bread. up, Eat I wake up, bread. and I'm like, you know, I feel kind of spiffy. Like I have a pep in my step as I'm as I'm walking. I didn't have a pep in my step on Friday. And you know, the thought pops into my head. Why not try to double East Bay today? Why not? And then the rest is history. Went went for it. Oh, the, the I will also add this. I've been tracking my pain scores. And I tend to only break the rules now if my knee pain score say I can handle the session. And they did. And what other rule did you break? What do you mean? Thumbs down. Thumbs down, brother. <laughs> yeah. 
Even the AI knew that was a fucked up answer. What other rule did you break in regards to? Oh, over jumped. I over jumped. Is there an, another other rule? No, but but let's just re, just explain a little bit more. Let's see. Drove Elaborate. The, we drove to the session. Oh, I tried a new dunk. And how much more did you over jump as a result? Uh, approximately three hundred percent more. Three. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say two hundred, but three hundred percent. Oh my yeah. god! I will say too that morning I also was taking my dog out, and it was like a Monday, and I think I was supposed to see my parents that week, and Austin was leaving on. He was supposed to leave on like Sunday. It was a, the weirdest like change in schedule because he had to go back and like get a fitting for a costume. Let's say it was Broadway. I don't know, and. He was like, I got to go. I got to go. I got to get this fitting because I want to get this gig. And we were like, all right, whatever. That's fine. So Monday morning, I'm walking around outside. I am taking my dog out and I threw the ball and I was like, oh, oh, you have a pep in your step. I feel good. Yeah. I was like, I never I haven't felt good in like a month. When you and feel the pep, bro. Mm. Mind you, this is deload week for me. So I really yeah. have no reason not to. And they were like, we're going to go to a low rim. And I was like that's even better because I have no confidence right now. My self-confidence is gone. And I told them if we do this, I will not be like hanging out and talking to you guys. I won't be coaching. I won't be communicating. I'm going to be dialed in on my session because I haven't had a good session and I just finished three weeks of training. So I need to try to have a good session to build confidence. So we go through this session. It's going decently. I ended up dunking on the nine, 10 and a half side or nine, 10 side. And then we were, Isaiah was warming up for 360 double between the legs. Austin was just going crazy because he got there way earlier and Isaiah took the longest shit of all time. So Austin was like 40 minutes warm. I thought you fell in, dude. I was like, is he in emotional turmoil? Like this dude's been in the bathroom for so long. I walked in, I was like, Isaiah, are you okay? You were like, yep. Yes. Uh, and Austin goes, he's definitely scrolling through Instagram. He's just like sitting there scrolling. If you go in there, you're going to hear reels playing. I didn't, yeah. but I did hear Isaiah, you know, in, lurking in the bathroom. And then, you know, he comes out 40 pounds uh, lighter and Austin's already warm flying. So, you know, we're going through the session. I have my three Red Bulls or whatever. Austin knocks it over like two seconds. And we've talked about this. It was a tragedy. And to this to this moment in time, I still stand by the statement that it nearly derailed the entire session. So, yeah, I'm I'm not at all paying attention to these two other than the Red Bull. When I see their body language, I see the uh, shaking head. And if, if in a warm up, you see Isaiah like, fuck, man, you know, that's that immediately communicates to me. This is about to be a very bad session. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I'm like, this is not good. Yeah. So I read body language a lot whenever I'm coaching athletes. It's like the way that they communicate how they're actually feeling to me. And I knew that you're reading the body language that Austin feels real peppy. He doesn't give a shit about spilling Gatorade or whatever their Red Bull because he feels good. So he's not going to take care of it for Isaiah. So he comes out, throws two pieces of paper towel down on the ground in the most piss poor way possible. And it's still everywhere. Walks through the Red Bull in the process and tracks it all over the court. No, and I'm he like, rolled the ball. The ball fell on the Red no, Bull. No, but then when you put the, when you put the paper towel down, he walked through the Red Bull that he's now rolled the ball through. So now he's tracking it on the bottom of his feet all over the court making the situation even worse. And this is where it was like, wow, well now we've tried to clean up and it's only made it worse. So I was like, yeah. I took my headphones out and I was like, I have to take control of the situation here because this is quickly going downhill. And in a way that I cannot describe to you listeners because you wouldn't understand unless you've been in my shoes and been coaching these guys for several years. So I'm like, all right, this is bad. We're in the 30 percentile of jumping ability of these two. We need to fix the situation. I get the largest roll of toilet paper or uh, paper towels I can find and just start cleaning for like 20 minutes. Finally, as soon I am talking literally and you can watch in the video, as soon as you see me nearly done cleaning up the Red Bull spill, Isaiah is like head at rim, like neck at rim. And I'm like, all right, we salvaged the session. I don't want to take credit yeah. for this, but... <laughs> I'm going to say that this was soon to be derailed and we have somehow managed to stop this, this runaway train. So get through the session and I'm just starting to fly rewarming up. Actually, I was jumping like shit rewarmed up and then I'm starting to fly. Like I, for me, it's a confidence thing. As soon as I have one good jump that doesn't hurt, that just feels on. It is like a switch. I just get in flow state and that happened. Then I was just punching everything. So I was like, Oh, I'm good. Not worrying about anything. Finished my session and Isaiah is like getting closer and closer to this dunk. So I really didn't want to stop. I was like, 
I, I don't want to stop this session. He feels good. I'm probably, he's probably going to take my head off and Austin's leaving. So I'm going to endorse this, which was ill-advised <laughs> and biased. Cause I rarely do. I care if Isaiah hits a new dunk. I really don't like you can ask him. Sometimes I don't even know. Like there was a dunk. It was a 360 J rich off the backboard or something like that. And I fucked up filming it. And Isaiah was like pissed. And I didn't even know it was a new dunk. I didn't even know why he cared. I was like, you probably hit that 10 million times. Like the number of dunks he's hit are way more than the ones he hasn't to this point that it's hard for me to keep track of the ones. Like yeah. I just assume he's kind of hit everything unless it's something like this. So this is one that was pretty highly coveted. And uh, after a very long draining weekend, I think all of us wanted to get out there and jump high. So uh, yeah, that is, I, I, I take full responsibility for egging on the continuation of the intensity but yeah. where are we at today where are we at today it's been how many days so so i ended up pulling my quad oh yeah we didn't even get to the end <laughs> yeah, very end of the session there was no signs by the way like wasn't feeling sore i was feeling zero pain it just freaking just jumped and, and i felt it pull a little bit uh and then today, I mean, yesterday I did leg extensions with 265. Today I can do a single leg wall sit at a half squat with very minimal. Like 265 is fucking bonkers, by the way. Really? For 10? Yeah. Is it the same machine that we have a 24 hour? Yeah. Yeah, that's insane, dude. I fatigue out at like 165. It's funny, Lewis, because I haven't lifted with Lewis in. I mean, since last he he I lifted with him last year, and then before that was like freaking two years or something. And I remember we were like lifting and stuff, and he's like, he's like, bro, you are so different now, <laughs> like, because <laughs> he, he he we lift. There was a period of time where we were lifting every day, and I guess it's like watching a kid grow up, or like you see a kid like every few months. For him, it's like he saw me in 2019. Uh, that would have been that almost before that, right? 2018. Yeah, 20. Yeah, 2018. 2018. And then like now literally saw, the first year I started coaching you. Yeah. Yeah. And it's different on machines too. Cause the whole workout was machines and it's like, I, it's more comparable for people. So he like, we were yeah, just, like technique was, isn't a variable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just how hard can you freaking contract the muscle? And he was like literally flabbergasted <laughs> how strong I was with stuff. You know, you know what actually shocked me too? Uh, Richard Tan, when he was here, he did 235 yeah. for eight on the leg extension machine and i was shocked like yeah. he's got some big old fucking quads on him but in my head i was like damn he's like almost as strong as isaiah and then you did 265 for 10 and i'm like okay maybe not <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there i mean there's other things too like his squat is not near as good as yours i think that's why he always says like i need to get my hips stronger because you thrash him in everything not quad dominant quad dominant stuff he's like okay but yeah. i mean he's good he's way better than me so, speaking of hip hips uh the hip thrust it happened again when i do an exercise and i'm like whoa like this shit like it i haven't done hip thrust heavy in a year probably but specifically with a barbell with a barbell i haven't done it in a long long, Wait, long did time. you do it with the bar or the machine with the bar yeah with the bar and i threw 535 on there and did it for three and I was like, yo, this exercise is crazy. Like, it feels really specific. You know what's funny is you always dog me for for putting them in. You're like, oh, you know, the ego just, lift. The dunker ego lift. Well, I, I hate setting them up as my biggest my biggest Barbell problem. specifically. Barbell and then, specifically. And then I also hate doing them at the end of the workout because I'm usually so freaking thrashed by that point. But this workout, it was my first lift. So it felt like, you know, when you're hyped to go like squat or power clean, yeah. like that hype, like I was, I went in there like hyped to hip thrust and like freaking set. It felt like I was deadlifting and you're setting it up. And then like, I'm freaking like going heavy and was stuff. Was that the like first that. lift or did I do it towards the end? I don't remember. It was the first lift. Like I went, it went hip yeah, thrust yeah. and like extension. Cause I think I, I was going to put RDL on there, but I wanted you to hit some sort of knee extension exercise. Cause you do get a little bit of quad activity in that. So yeah, that was the reason why, but it went yeah. well. Went very well, obviously. Yeah, I didn't so, know that. miraculous well, recovery. You're cured. You're basically yeah. cured. Now, I think you're probably. I mean, at this point, and I'll double check this with Ben, but in my experience, I have pulled my hamstring so many times in the process of trying to be like an elite speed jumper, and I was okay. I probably had like a thirty-some inch vertical, which is not bad considering I was a lifetime power jumper. Um, I was able to learn how to do it 
after seemingly it being impossible. And then uh, I think I pulled it maybe every other month for like in 2019, I probably pulled each one every other month. Like I would pull one, jump off the other leg, pull that one, jump off the other leg. That probably happened for like six months. I want to say it was a long time and never really got better. And the whole time I was loading the muscle training muscle, spe muscle specific weight room exercises, doing a lot of eccentric work, trying to see sarcomeogenesis happen, try to see the fascicle length increase. And I just was not responding to any of those stimuli. And I would give it like several days after the, the stimulus and I would build in intensity in the faster stuff really slowly. And it would still kind of bother me. Like even when it was better, I wasn't confident in it. I'd be like, if I know if I try hundred percent, I'm going to pull it. Yeah. And I know that I'm not going to do that. Part of that is that speed jumping, the rate of force development in the hamstrings a lot higher because the co-contraction is a lot faster. In your case, I don't think that's going to be the case, but I would just push too much too soon in the fast work. And I don't want to do that with you. I actually found that when I went home and I had my best jumping ever, this would have been after training in Los Altos. So now like way later on, even when I was training in Los Altos or Mountain View, when Isaiah was in 29, this was like our, both each of our respective training arcs, probably for the first time you hit 50. And when I hit in East Bay a little later on and had my best jumping ever, I was pulling it all the time. Like I had to do a lot of BFR. Uh, I pulled it on a day I was trying to East Bay and then I had to not jump for two weeks and then went to dunk camp and then it still wasn't hundred percent. I didn't feel confident in it. Then I unloaded and unloaded and unloaded. And then it was like still kind of bothering me, but I had this more rest than training like the training from jumping was so intense on the muscle that i would have to give it three to four days to bounce back and to recover mind you i've pulled that at that point in my life probably easily in the double digits i mean probably 20 times in my across my lifetime uh most of that was for me testing things across my life you guys will know that i'm insane in that sense like i'll I risk it for the biscuit. I just go for into absolute oblivion to test something to see if it is possible. And I'm not talking like one session. I'm talking, I will do it for months and months and months to try to learn something new that someone hasn't experimented with before. And yeah. yeah and then, you know, it kind of teaches me something and then I'll pay attention to that. If someone else has a different experience than me, I really take those intensely. It's like people that are willing to try for extended periods of time. So more rest was definitely way more effective. And that's the same thing I'm doing. If you guys are listening for Isaiah and Isaiah, know you're listening to this is we're building in more rest when it comes to the actual jumping, because the risk of re injury goes up or sorry, the risk of injury, it goes up when it's a risk of re injury. Meaning if you've hurt it once, the chances you're going to hurt it again are way higher. Age is another one. Eccentric strength is another one. Velocity rate of rate of loading is another one. So in his case, all of those are, the highest risk they've ever been. He just got hurt. He's older than he's ever been because he's not getting any younger. And, uh, <laughs> and, and the movement is more explosive and faster than any other person on the planet in that specific activity, specifically on the takeoff velocities. So we have to be very careful in building it back in right now. He feels so good. It's almost tempting to be like, Oh, you're good. You're cleared. But that's not really the case. Like you're not out of the weeds until you slow cook that progression and no, for sure, for sure. Like, I wouldn't be opposed to you going right, left for a little bit to try to. Yeah, I was actually thinking about it. that. I was thinking. I think about I think that's it. one of the best things to do to to reintegrate jumping. Like I've done, you know, I've done that so many times. You know, when I've tweaked my hamstring, I'll just go back to doing. I'll do two foot, or I'll do you know the other leg, or yeah. whatever. I think it's a good way to pivot and give it time to rest and recover, and you can kind of focus on other things. So that might be an option doing some one foot on the other leg might be an option because it's your left leg. So your right foot jumping, um, mm. you know, just really low volumes or low rimming, just so you scratch that itch. I think that can be really useful for guys when they get hurt. Yeah. It's really hard to stay motivated whenever you're like so hyper-focused on one thing that you can't even do, you know, mm. like sometimes I would recommend if you're a jumper and I'll be like, okay, go throw the jab or something like that. Do something else fun, you know? My yeah. Wi-Fi is dying or your Wi-Fi is dying? Something's going on here. I think that's yours. I think that's yours. Mic check, mic check. Oh, it looks good. Weird. It looks good. It just froze for like a little bit, but your audio was good. Okay, good. I don't know why that happened. Anyways, yeah. I feel like it's a good place to cut it off. Um, if you guys are interested in getting coaching, we should have said this in the beginning, but we didn't. Go to teachbestrength.com. Isaiah, do we want to announce 
what we're doing right now. Yeah. Uh, would you want to announce it? Wait, let's pause. Let's time skip. We're live. We're back. We time so, skipped. Go ahead. We time skipped, and I have an exciting announcement. As you guys know, next week is something called Black Friday, and a lot of people give some crazy discounts. And to commemorate this celebration of the Thanksgiving holiday and the holidays in general, we are going to do the biggest discount we've ever done in our in our lives. It is going to be a 70% off discount off your first month. This is only for the monthly training, only for guys that have never been on THP before. If you've been on THP before or currently an athlete, I'm sorry. This is not for you. 70% off if you use the code Black Friday. No spaces in the word. And if you're going to be a one and done, don't even do it. This is to give guys a chance, guys who are thinking about it and are on the fence, a chance to see what it's about. But we want long term people. So, yeah, go try THP for 30 bucks or $29.70. Is what it comes out to. After that, it's going to be $127. So literally, uh, you know, like 6X or 5X, something like that, 4X price increase, 4X. Cheaper, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> we, we also uh, want to be clear. If you stay on the service, you're grandfathered in at your, your current rate. So if you hop off the service and you try to sign back up, the price went up. I'm sorry. That's just the way it's going to be. Sales happen. We don't do them often. We've never do big sales. I really hate sales. I hate them because I don't like people signing up and just like testing the water. This is truly for guys who are considering it. They maybe are scared to pull the trigger. This is kind of your opportunity to do that. Um, but yeah, we don't, I think, uh, you know, it. I'll talk to you about this afterwards, I say, but I have some other, other thoughts too. Um, anyways, yeah. that's the video guys. Thanks for listening. And we will see you guys tomorrow. Goodbye. Goodbye, 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 goodbye.